welcome back to our restoration project. So today we're gonna to finally take apart our lawn block. So this is basically gonna conclude the final chapter of our restoration project. So we've been about six years into this project now. I've left it on this stand for about five years. Um, this engine has not been seen inside for about 44 years. So for those of you who've been following the restoration, you kind of know a little bit about the background on this. And again, for those of you who haven't, I'll just give you a brief update on uh, what went wrong here. So in 1978, a previous owner, a very good friend of mine, was out with a friend uh, driving around, uh, apparently some high high revs on the engine, and bang, we hear, we hear a noise, and uh, uh, something blew inside the engine. Uh, he was about 90 miles away from home at that time. Um, it didn't require a tow truck back to, uh, to home. He did manage to get it back home, uh, drive it into a service guy, and uh, the service guy had it from there on out um, and for quite a long time. So what happened is uh, my buddy, after a long time waiting, just got tired of waiting, waiting, him and a friend of his went down, picked up the car, drove it out of there, and uh, according to him, it never ran right since then. And uh, half the reason I determined it didn't run correctly was the <laughs> disastrous carburation setup uh, that left the shop at that time. No way it could ever run correctly with the carburation the way it was. However, we don't know what's going on inside the engine. He did uh, take it apart and rebuild it to some degree. So what we're gonna find in here, I have no idea. Um, probably gonna be some new parts in here. Probably gonna see some damage or, or abrasions for something that went bang. I don't know what we're gonna find in here. Be interesting to see what it is. Um, so let's go ahead and get started. I stripped off uh, most of the outside superficial, so I've got kind of a game plan to strip this down. Uh, we'll take a close-up look at some things on the bench here, uh, my game plan, and how we're going to go about it. Uh, this is a 1967 uh, matching numbers to the car case. Uh, it's an aluminum case, so we're going to catch a little bit of a break there because the aluminum cases were quite good in comparison to uh, magnesium cases, a little bit stronger, so maybe we'll catch a break there. Um, other than that, that's about all I know of what we got here. So I don't know what's been switched out over time. I don't know what parts are new in here, what parts have been reused, but we're gonna find out, so let's get started. Okay, so let's just have a quick look at the uh, overall condition of this long block here before we dismantle. Um, so the oil's been drained out, uh, and when I did drain it out, it was clean oil, so uh, not many miles were put on it once it was driven away from the service center. Um, everything is extremely dry, so we're going to be lubricating all fasteners as we untighten everything. Um, I don't see any external evidence of any kind of cracks or uh, very severe leaks we should be concerned with, just basic um, overall leakage in general. Everything else seems to be okay. I did reinstall the flywheel and lock the crankshaft. Uh, so we can get our cam nuts off of there. So we're pretty stabilized there. Um, I don't really want to clean this up before disassembling. I just soon leave all the evidence on it. Uh, that way I can kind of follow any kind of cracks or any kind of uh, leaks that I should be concerned of. Rather than uh, cleaning all that up, you wouldn't really have a trail of evidence. Um, it's definitely clean enough to dismantle. This was a California car, so we're pretty lucky there. Uh, but everything looks to be in fairly good shape. And then also I've loosened up all our rockers to get started. Okay, so then as we get our engine taken apart here, uh, the idea is to lay everything across this bench. Um, I've got a piece of cardboard set down here and taped down. And the idea is that the uh, cardboard soaks up all the oil and dribble we can put everything together in sets and keep track of everything. I've got a new cam nut tool here, uh, the Stomsky cam nut tool, SR051. Really, really nice tool. So we're gonna see how that works. Um, I've got pages printed out from the manual. We'll be following along, along with Wayne Dembski's book here uh, to some degree for dismantling our long block. Uh, I'll be using KB88 on all our fasteners, get things loosened up. So let's get this thing lubed up and take her apart.
Okay guys, so this is our top left inside guide and that does not look like it should look. Something definitely ate that up. Why it was left in there on a rebuild, I have no idea, but that's definitely part of the story. Look at our case here. So we're almost ready to split this guy apart here. I've taken the flywheel off, uh, unlocked our crankshaft uh, pistons. We're just going to pull those C-clips out of there, wrist pins, and get those out. Um, the manual says that I may have to heat the pistons up to get those to slide out of there, so we'll have to see how that goes. Also, while it's on a stand here, I want to pull the head studs. Um, I just want to make sure i got something nice and secure while I try to gently get those things out of there. Be very careful not to hurt the case. So let me get those things done and we'll crack this thing open and see what's inside. Okay, so after wrestling with these guys for about an hour, uh, my stud extractor didn't really work out for us. So I'm finding that the best way to do this is a pair of jam nuts uh, about halfway down on this thread, which is not much thread. And if we take it snug and then just gently tickle it with an impact, it should come right out of there. But the trick is to have these tight and lined up. Lined up here. Uh, impact set on low and just real slow.
Okay, so inside the engine at last, we can finally see what's going on in here. So I've just kind of looked everything over real carefully, and I don't see anything uh, in particular that I really need to be too concerned of uh, without measuring. Uh, crankshaft looks to be in pretty good shape, where it looks to be consistent and even. Um, coloration of everything looks to be fine. And uh, it looks to me as if uh, somebody might have been in this case before, uh, but it doesn't look like the case has been sent out for any kind of mill work, uh, just, a, just on a basic overall observation. Uh, the head studs were extremely tight in all cases. Um, didn't run into any loose head studs. Threads were real tight, so we we're gonna catch a break there. Uh, everything else looks to be pretty good. Let's look at the other half. Here looks to be pretty clean and in good shape. So let's look at some of the damage here that I found that is uh, fairly obvious. So I've got a nut here with a big gash in it and a washer and a chain ramp that's uh, completely destroyed. Also, we've got somebody who's messed around with and modified the chain tensioner. So it looks to me like we lost the left chain tensioner. The chain is eating into the side of the cover there a little bit. So it looks like the story uh, for this engine would have been a chain tensioner, which was a uh, reason for all the trouble. However, I don't know if that's the reason uh, for any engine work farther than uh, just taking off the front of the engine. I don't know if any work was done uh, on the bottom half previous to that or whether it was all done at the same time. Previous owner uh, really just doesn't remember as it was a long time ago. So from here, I'm just gonna leave this set up in the stand as I'm running tight on bench space, as you can see. I'm gonna start rolling through everything here and uh, get it all cleaned up, measured, and uh, take inventory and build a game plan. So I'd leave you guys with a little bit of food for thought here. So uh, there's a known principle as the butterfly effect. And so the reason for the survival of this car is this chain tensioner right here. That's the very reason this car survived. Even though it seems like it's the thing that took the car down, it's actually the thing that saved the car because, because of that and the engine work afterwards, it was never able to be driven again. So it's been sitting since 1978 as a result. And also as a result of that chain tensioner going uh, 44 years ago, you guys are watching this video. Now, what a strange world. Well, thanks for watching, and we'll see you on the next video.